Ananda, for my entire life, I've been fascinated with the concept of consciousness from the scientific point of view, from the philosophical, from the theological point of view. In terms of understanding not just ourselves, but the universe, what is the Buddhist understanding of consciousness? Uh, Robert, you put the question in a very interesting manner because you had, what did you know about consciousness in terms of the cosmos? The Buddha says, this fathom long body is the entire universe. In other words, what happens to you is what happens in the universe. If you accept that by studying yourself, the problems of the universe, the situation of the universe, or the ultimate reality of the universe can be comprehended, let us start with the way the Buddha talks of consciousness in an individual. Okay. In Buddhism, we define a person as consisting of two elements, nama, rupa. Nama is name, as it sounds, and rupa is form. But nama there stands for not purely a name, but for four psychological functions. Mm -hmm. He says, a person consists of a body, and that's a, there is no person just by be, having a body, unless there is perception. And this perception must relate to sensation of feelings. And with the feelings and the sensation, that should be a record of all what you have thought, what you have experienced, which is called mental formations. And then say the repository for all that is consciousness. Okay. So a being is five factors put together. We say five aggregates. Having said that, consciousness or what goes in the mind or what is the thought process becomes the foremost consideration for Buddha for everything. The One of the most popular books for one to understand Buddhism is a collection of 423 verses, stanzas called the Dhammapada, words of, the, of righteousness. The first sentence of it is, all phenomena are based on the mind. Mind is the foremost and mind is the forerunner. It, 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 it is the substrate of everything. Yes. The thought, thought process. Then, with this emphasis that the Buddha placed on the mind, the, if you are going to look for a subtitle for Buddhism, we always say the cultivation of the mind, the development of the mind is the subtitle for <laughs> the entire uh, the way of life that Buddhism represents. We come to several very interesting uh, incident, uh, I mean, situations in which consciousness is being referred to. First is birth of a child. Mm. How is a child conceived? Mm. They say three things must come together for the conception of a baby. The father, mother, in the fertile period, and some consciousness to arrive. Mm. Now, Buddha was often asked about rebirth. What comes? He said, life begins when consciousness arrives. In the rules for the Buddhist monks and nuns, murder is a grave offense. You lose your membership in the Sangha, if you commit murder. And then say, murder is the deprivation of life of a being. And the being is described as, uh, say, the um, embryo from the moment consciousness enters it. Mm. In other words, people now very often ask, what is the Buddhist concept of uh, soul and so on? But they, we don't talk in terms of a permanent soul, which is another aspect of the Buddhist philosophy. But the consciousness as what connects one being to another being, the, what we describe in the, again, Buddhist theory, the same and not the same. 
So consciousness is the same and not the same yeah. at the same time? At the same time. <laughs> the person who is reborn is the consciousness of the person who was before. But by the time he is reborn, his consciousness too has changed. Oh. Because Buddhism's first principle is that everything is changed. It's in a flux. Everything is transient. Yes. Uh, impermanence is the key. So that is the way that the the uh, our idea of rebirth is explained as far as Buddhism is concerned. Now I'm trying to give you the different ways in which we uh, talk about consciousness in uh, the Buddhism. Then in the late uh, scholastic study of the Buddha's teachings, Buddhist psychology evolved as a discipline by itself. And they tried to go into the way the mind works mm. in great detail mm. and went on to find that that 89 possible thought processes that one could identify. 89. 89. <laughs> and they said, these are consciousnesses connected with the worldly existence, mm. sensual existence. In other words, uh, the life that we lead here today in the world as it is, is the life that we know and that is the sensual life and that consciousness, they were able to have, these are good ones where uh, merit acquires, these are bad ones where demerit acquires, mm -hmm. these are actions which have no, neither uh, the this effect mm -hmm. or the other effect. Then we go on to a level of development of one's mind through mental uh, meditational process, mental development process, where the meditation begins at the level of our sensual world because we had to begin where we are. And we could proceed to a point where we deal with what we call the material existences. Those are states of uh, trances, we say, or sometimes they say absorptions, but higher mental abilities that have been gained through meditation, which come to that level of rupa vachara. They say rupa vachara means connected with form. Mm. Then we also believe that there are the thoughts that would lead to you, lead you to states where a mind exists and a body may not exist, or body does not exist. It really, we should say, an immaterial stage, but sometimes the translations today into English, most of our texts, they would say fine material uh -huh. existence, but uh, the word as used in early is immaterial. immaterial. In other words, we accept a situation where consciousness may exist, or there may be existences in the cosmology that we, Buddhism uh, talks of, where Consciousness could exist without the body. Mm. Then comes the highest level where the Buddha was leading you to, where once you reach enlightenment, you have a consciousness of the supramundane level. So the thought processes, which I said 89, which is also uh, expanded into 121, it's been described as belonging to four stages. So that is where the consciousness is connected with the cosmology. So this sounds like consciousness is something very fundamental in the universe, that it is, a, it is not something that's purely material because it, it can exist independent of the material world. That's exactly how uh, uh, the Buddhist cosmology, you see, Buddhist cosmology is said uh, in this way, it's very interesting because we think in terms of at least 31 possible different states of existence. Hmm. We have the one that they, they talk about the uh, hells and the denizens of the hell. Then there are the various unseen powers that are not hungry ghosts and uh, demons and so on, the unseen. Then we come to the human stage. Then above the human stage, we have uh, six heavens, for example in which the sensual pleasures that are in this world are continued mm. and they belong to that sensual mm. level there. Then we have about another 15 or 16 which talks in terms of uh, uh, Brahma worlds, they call them, 
superior worlds where the people whose minds have been developed to the highest stages uh, would be reborn mm. and they're supposed to be states of great happiness. The, then the last four are the ones where it's only the consciousness that exists. Mm. So cosmology had been connected in a way that consciousness has a part, play, uh, uh, the, the part to play in it. One more use of the word consciousness in Buddhism is that every one of our sense organs is connected with the consciousness. When I look at you, first thing is my eye consciousness starts working. And then Buddhist psychology traces what happens to this consciousness. It is this eye consciousness that makes a decision, recognizes you and decides to accept you, register that impression, to decide what actions to take. And we trace 17 moments like this, 17 moments when the consciousness acts from the time it has been distracted to the time it goes back to rest. Mm. So pulling that all together, how do you see the relationship, the fundamental relationship between consciousness and the cosmos? Cosmo, uh, but, uh, as a Buddhist, I would say, the proper way to explain all the emphasis that Buddha has laid on consciousness and understanding the mind and the thought process is to say, that is the fundamental and the basic element of all existence. 